Okay, towards defining Gauss curvature, let's first review what is the curvature of a curve, C of T, in Rn. So remember, you have a curve running through Rn, and we had defined the curvature of a curve. It was defined to be the change in the tangent vector's direction divided by the, um, the length of the, or the velocity, the speed of the curve. So when the curve is actually parameterized by arc length, it is just the change in the tangent length. Um, vector. So we're tangent vector. The tangent vector is the velocity divided by the speed. So in the special case where c is parameterized by arc length, we don't have to divide by the c primes because the c lengths of c primes are 1. But this is the general definition, k equals t prime of t divided by c prime of t. And so we can think of these t primes. These are the tangent vectors in pink here. And as the tangent vectors bend very close, they, if they bend quickly, you have the small circle that's approximating the curve up to second order. And then this curvature can, comes out as 1 over r. When we, we figured out that in um, earlier in the course, we proved that. So this is an, uh, a circle which approximates the curve up to second order. So up to second derivatives, it's agreeing with the curve. And um, 1 over this radius is the curvature. So the curvature is very large where it bends very strongly, and it's smaller where it bends slowly. And if the curve actually becomes straight somewhere, and it's just moving along straight, and then the tangent vector is just going exactly straight the whole time, if the tangent vector just is the same all the time, then over here at a point like that, the curvature is actually equal to zero. You might think of it as like a radius as infinity. So that is the curvature of a curve. Okay, so we have to remember this notion of a curvature of a curve when we're going to switch over to Gauss curvature. But let's just consider now the special case. Consider C of t sitting inside R2. And if C of t is sitting inside R2, you could, uh, with C prime of t not equal to zero, then actually C of t, the image, C of some, some a to b, is a submanifold of dimension 1. It only has one parameter, so it's a submanifold of dimension 1 in R2. So as a submanifold of dimension 1 in R2, remember when we have m, the dimension of our submanifold equal to n minus 1, then we have the tangent space to the submanifold. Well, the tangent space is, is, uh, is one-dimensional. It's just lines. So we'll have tangent space. If, if our m, if we consider m, our m1 is equal to cab, if we think of m as cab, it's a one-dimensional submanifold, then tpm is a line, it's a tangent line, so it's a whole line, and the normal is defined as the perpendicular to the line. So the normals are these vectors here, normal to the curve, And if you look at that, the normals being always perpendicular to these tangent vectors, the normals could be pointing in or out. I'm just drawing them out right now so it's easier to see them. You will notice that the normals change also exactly the same as the tangents do. So the change in the normals is actually agreeing completely with the change in the tangents. So actually you get a theorem that the curvature is equal to the normals changing over time divided by c prime of t. Now this is only in the case where c of t is in R2. That is the only setting where we have this theorem. Okay, so in the case where C of t is in R2, then the change in the n primes divided by C prime of t is equal to the curvature. All right, so that's uh, an interesting fact that we're going to build on because now what we want to talk about is what if m is a two-dimensional submanifold inside a, if 
them as two-dimensional inside a three-dimensional space, then we want to understand about the movement of the normals in order to define our curvatures. So I'll take a little break here so we can redraw everything and move on.